This is Eagle Al, and today I'll be talking about Isaiah Rogers. Yes, he get his welcome to Philadelphia moment. Also, we got to talk about Devontae Smith, honest take on Nick Sirianni. And lastly, we're going to talk about Johnny Wilson being one of the most overlooked rookies. But let's get straight into it. All right, man, let's hop straight into it. Let's talk about Isaiah Rogers. Yes, Isaiah Rogers, the new home run derby winner. So Devontae Smith, he do this thing around this time each and every year. He has this celebrity softball game invite most of his teammates. It could be guys from other teams or former guys like Quez Watkins was there. I think Devontae Smith brother was there. I think his name is Kristen Smith and who won MVP um Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, so content creators were there. That was cool. You see like uh Thomas and Josh do their thing, take pictures, videos with the players. Content creation is becoming a big thing. But let's talk about Isaiah Rogers. So Isaiah Rogers, you know, it was reporters there like so he was saying, like, yo, I didn't even know it was gonna be that many people here. Like it's a celebrity softball game with NFL players, basically. But it was a lot of people there. I think it was damn near sold out, if not sold out. And he had a blast again. Home run, uh, winner. He also tweeted out after man. Listen, I love y'all Philly fans. The love and support y'all showed me today was amazing with four green hearts. So he's getting that feel. He's starting to love Philadelphia. And I always say this, things happen for a reason, right? So say if Isaiah Rogers never gets suspended, he's still a coat and he probably got a nice contract. So I'm um, look, the gambling thing, coats did made their decision. Eagles picked him up and now he's doing his thing during OTAs. And when the training camp comes, he's going to do his thing there. And Isaiah Rogers, man, you haven't seen anything. Until that training camp, to that first public practice, to that first public practice, I'm telling you, you haven't seen anything. And also, shout out to me because I, I, I'm going to just take the credit. If it wasn't for me, Isaiah Rogers would not be at the celebrity softball game. So I put out some posts at and Devontae Smith on Instagram, and Devontae Smith seen it. Devontae Smith seen it, and then the next day it was announced Isaiah Rogers was in the celebrity softball game. So I'm taking some credit. I'm definitely taking some credit for Isaiah Rogers being there. But since we're talking about Devontae Smith, Devontae Smith gave his take on the Nick Sirianni thing. And I usually like Ed Carras, his, you know, articles, but he gave a nasty headline saying like, oh, this is what Jalen Hurts should have said. It was a horrible headline. But I clicked on it because, you know, it, it was a little clickbait. I'm like, let me see what Devontae Smith said that Jalen Hurts should have said. And Devontae Smith worded himself well. So let me go over the quote. So this is Devontae Smith. He's saying, and quote, like he said, it gives some time to do a lot more, to see a lot more. And I think that's a good thing, said Devontae Smith during his press conference. So he's saying the, Nick Sirianni taking a step back to see a lot and... He, he can do a lot more per se. And then Devontae Smith went into more details. He said, when the head man has the power to put his hands on everything, to see everything and make everything easier on himself, it makes it easier on us because some, sometimes that we may see, he may not see because he's focused on something on just one thing so much. So I think he's alluding to last year. There was things happening as far as the defensive side and other things. And Nick Sirianni couldn't see it. Maybe, again, Brian Johnson was the problem. And Nick Sirianni couldn't see it because he was so focused on, I guess, the plays and what Jalen Hurts is doing. And he lost sight of the whole team. And that's how it just imploded. And then Devontae Smith said this. But for him to be able to look over everything now it's like okay he's not blind with something now now we can talk to him because he knows what's going on with everything so him seeing everything he knows what's going on with everything and i do like Devonte smith answer but to throw a little dig at jalen hurts wasn't cool it wasn't cool at all but Devonte smith was very honest it was truthful it's like look just he'll be able to see everything and that's what you want from your head coach right to be the head coach see everything not lost of what's going on 
Snit Sirianni got into a lot of spat and matches. Remember, he got into some with Hassan Reddick. He got into some with uh, Devontae Smith, and at times he didn't know what was going on. Like, we've seen the sideline tiff and taps, but it seemed like the guys are good. Devontae Smith, it seemed like Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown really has a love for Nick Sirianni, but the questionable one is Jalen Hurts. How much do Jalen Hurts love Nick Sirianni? And I always say, if there was a problem, even though I don't think there is, but if there was, Brian Johnson wasn't just no quarterback coach to Jalen Hurts or no offensive coordinator. That was his guy. And for him to get let go, maybe Jalen Hurts feels some type of way about it. I don't know. But that's just me speculating. I can't say that is true that Jalen Hurts don't like Nick Sirianni because of Brian Johnson. Now, I think we're going to see some things with Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni dapping each other up and, you know, handshaking and stuff. I don't think there's a problem. I just think it's the end of June and the beginning of July. Need headlines. But again, Ed Karras with this headline, it, it was nasty work. It was nasty work. Again, shout out to Devontae Smith, the celebrity softball game. His honest take and keeping it real. I think it was a perfect take on everything. A perfect take. All right, so let's talk about Johnny Wilson. Yes, Johnny Wilson, according to a Bleacher Report, was one of the most overlooked rookies coming out the draft. As we know, Johnny Wilson went, what, sixth round? Tall, super tall dude. Uh, could catch over anybody because of his height. And he made a little noise during OTAs. But, you know, with Steve Smith and these guys criticizing him, like he plays small. That, that's my problem with Johnny Wilson. Even when I was watching, I'm like, why he play like he's my height? And I'm 5'8". Like, moss these dudes, overpower these dudes. But he plays like, oh, I'm trying to avoid hits. Uh, I'm trying to get him out the way. And I don't want to say soft because it's not soft, but it's like he doesn't play like somebody six, seven. Like, for example, if you watch basketball, you could tell like, yeah, Jokic is dominant. Like a LeBron James is dominant, especially in his early years. Like a Giannis, he plays up to his size. But then, you know, you got some guys that are six, seven. They just, you know, shooters, mid range shot. It's like, bro, like you're six, seven, six, eight, and 200 plus pounds. Overpower these dudes. And that's my thing with Johnny Wilson. He, he plays like a, a mid range shooter. He doesn't play like a dominant guy. I'm not saying LeBron James, but like, come on, man. You gotta play dominant, dominate these dudes. But yeah, I think he was overlooked to, again, to fall where he fell. It was just a huge steal. And it's going to be interesting how we develop him, how he comes along, because he's definitely a project. He got all the physical tools to be the guy for sure. The speed, the height, the length. You no, know, again, catch over anybody. Even I think the last play during OTAs, he lost Isaiah Rogers, who can possibly even be our best corner on the team. So that lets you know the kid can play. It's just that, you know, you got to develop. You got to develop at the same time, even though he's overlooked, but there's a reason why he fell. There's a reason why Steve Smith get the take C's take because he think he's just going to be a jag in this league. And we will see. We will see. I think he's going to be good. I think when he gets his opportunities, he's going to take advantage of it. You hope that he becomes good because just imagine if Johnny Wilson in two years become that guy. Now you'll have a Dominant Johnny Wilson, you have a dominant AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. And hell, maybe you can slide Devontae Smith in the slot. You know, and he can be our third receiver. And you can move Devontae Smith around how you want to. But that's if Johnny Wilson develops. And if he never does, then it's cool. He was a later pick. And hopefully we get something out of him, maybe a trade or something. But if he does, you know, you're talking about a solid three for a long time. Or a AJ Brown decided to hang it up and, a, you know, once his contract is over, got Johnny Wilson. he will be the guy coming up. So, yeah, that's how I feel about Johnny Wilson. But, hey, man, what do you think? Of how do you feel about the news today? Isaiah Rogers. Yeah, he's that dude. He's that dude, man. Also, how do we feel about Johnny Wilson? How do we feel about Devontae Smith-Tate? But this is Eagle Al, man. Come on.